In the previous episodes, we have seen that charges inside a magnetic field experience a force if they are moving. And we have seen this quite a lot now. You have a charge Q which is moving with a velocity V and suppose that there is a magnetic field somewhere in the inside the board. Then the Lorentz force tells us that the magnetic force F acting on the charge should be equal to Q times V cross B. The question we are going to try and answer in this episode is, is that of any practical use to us? I mean, yes, I've given you some applications, but what about day-to-day -day life applications? Where is it useful for you and me? Well, forces on moving charges might sound a little bit of abstract quantities for us because, you know, we don't deal with moving charges. But guess what? Moving charges also mean something else. Moving charges mean electric current. Therefore, if a force affects a moving charge, the mag sorry. <laughs> Therefore, if a magnetic field affects a moving charge, it can also mean magnets can affect electric current and that's going to be very useful to us because electric current is a day-to-day -day life stuff. We, you and we, both of us experience this, right? And so that's what we're going to investigate in this episode. How is going to be the force acting on a charged, not charged, a wire that carries the current. Here is the setup. <clears throat> we have North Pole and the South Pole and let's just assume for simplicity that the magnetic field that they're going to produce downwards is pretty uniform in this region. And the magnetic field only exists in the region which has a length L. Outside, over here and over here, the magnetic field is zero. And we have a current carrying wire that carries a current towards the right. The question now is what's going to happen to this current? Well, notice that if you have a current towards the right, it, it's the same as saying that there are charges, positive charges, moving towards the right with a velocity v. And therefore we now have a positive charge which is moving towards the right with a velocity v. And we have a magnetic field at that point which is pointing downwards. And so v cross v tells us that there must be a force acting on that charge. And that force must be, according to our right hand rule, that force, if you do a cross product, you get the answer to be into the book or into the screen in this example. So the force must be into the screen. And hence this section of the wire which I'm sharing now, this entire section of the wire which contains these moving charges, this entire section must experience a force inwards. So the whole wire would get deflected inwards. <clears throat> That's very useful to us because for the first time now, we can actually start pushing wires that carry current just by using magnetic fields. You see, currents alone can't do that, but magnetic fields can push these current carrying wires. So let's try to find out the expression for this magnetic push. Or we can write, we can start with the Lorentz force. F has to be equal to Q times V cross B. And this V is the velocity with which the charged particles are moving. And if you remember in current electricity, this velocity is not the thermal velocity, but it's the effective velocity that, that is responsible for current. That's what we call as a drift speed or drift velocity. So this velocity is just drift velocity. And that's a constant. For a given voltage, that's a constant. And therefore that's going to be equal to the length that it traverses, that is length L, divided by the time T the time it takes for the charge to go from here to there. Cross B. And I can now write this a little differently. I can, I can combine the Q and the T together. And I think you can see where I'm going with this. What is Q divided by T? Q divided by T is just the current. It's the current through the wire, isn't it? So it's the current I times L cross B. And there we have it. This is the magnetic force that acts on a current carrying wire. Now notice carefully that if I were to increase the region of this magnetic field, not increase the strength, but the increase the region by making my magnets longer, the shaded region of the wire would be longer. That is the L would be longer and hence we would now get a stronger force. So you can think of it as each section of the wire experiences this force. And the force is proportional to the length of that section. <clears throat> All right, so let's try to understand the direction. You see the direction of this is given by L cross B. L, you can think of that as the displacement vector of the charged, of, of the charged particles, positive charges. So L has the same direction as the current. 
You may ask why not put an arrow mark on the current? Well, current is a scalar quantity, okay? So same direction as the current. And this thing has all sorts of applications. For example, it is useful in motors. Have you heard of motors? Motors is what makes your fans rotate, okay? Think about it, you switch on the fan, the electricity flows and something starts rotating. How does an electricity make something rotate? How does a flow of electrons make something like, like a fan, a macroscopic quantity rotate? Well, the secret is over here. It's not just the current, it's the magnetic field that pushes the current. That's what makes it rotate, okay? And we're gonna investigate that in the next episode in great detail. And motors are useful for fans. They are used in washing machines, we have Tesla cars today, electric cars, they use motors. You have watches, electrical watches, they, use, they run on batteries, all sorts of applications, galvanometers, ammeters, everything. We're gonna look at all of that in great detail now. So here's a demo. So the demonstration is very similar to the setup that I showed you in, in the video. Only small difference is we are going to be putting the current towards the left in this example. Um, so use your right hand rule. If the current is towards the left and the magnetic field is downwards, if you use L cross B now, you're gonna see the force has to be outwards. So the wire has to jump outwards. Let's test that. Whoa, there it is. Let's look at that in a slow motion. Ah, that, that force was due to the magnetic field. Try to pause the video and wonder about this for a while. It's a magnetic force acting on a current carrying wire. Amazing, isn't it? That's truly amazing. All right, we have a similar setup now. This time, the magnetic field is running out of the screen. And again, the current will be towards the left. So we have just changed perspective or changed view, something like that. Again, you use L cross B and notice that the current, uh, the, the force has to be now upwards. And so the wire or the, the aluminum foil has to jump up now. Let's just, just, let's just check that. There we have it. Alright, see you next time.